Let's learn how to read and interpret velocity time graphs. Okay, so pause the video, try this question, and then come back for the answer. Okay, first thing you want to notice about this graph, and here where I'm talking about the big difference, I'm just talking about the fact that we've got a V, a velocity, on the y-axis and not a position like on that, on that last graph. And that's going to make some very profound differences. And students often make the mistake of confusing the graphs. So it's very essential that as soon as you look at the graph, you pick out whether it's a position time graph, a velocity time graph, or even an acceleration time graph. So in this particular graph, how, what is the motion? Well, we know we've got a positive and constant velocity. And that means the object's moving to the right at a constant speed. Now, from this point down, right, the velocity is getting smaller. And of course, at this point, it has zero velocity. And then it starts getting negative velocities here. So because this is a constant line, we have acceleration at a constant rate. And what happens is that the object slows down. It turns around at this point, And then it speeds up, moving to the left, until it gets here. And then it's going to slow down again until it comes to a stop here. That's, remember, zero velocity. So it came to a stop. And then it remains stopped. Something important to notice about this graph is we don't have any idea where this object is. A VT graph tells us nothing about the position. It tells us a lot about the change in position, but not the actual position. OK, so I have two quick questions for you here. What I'd like you to do is to try the questions out and then come back for the answer. OK, so the first question, meaning of the slope of a VT graph? Well, if we've got a VT graph, and let's imagine we've, we've got a motion like that, pick out two points on that motion, and we can make a little square. We'll have a rise and a run. Of course, the rise is going to be the change of velocity. And the run will be the change in time, or the time interval. And since acceleration is equal to change in velocity all over change in time, and that is the rise over the run, and that's got to equal the slope. That means the slope is the acceleration. Second question, how do you know if the object is moving to the left or the right on a VT graph? Be a bit careful with that question. Remember, you've got positive velo velocities all up here. And you've got negative velocities down here. So if we've got a point down here, any point below the time axis, that's going to be moving left. Any point above the time axis is going to be moving to the right. So. Basically, on a VT graph, if the point is above the x-axis, the time axis, that is, it's going to be moving to the right. Two quick questions for you. Pause the video, try the questions, come back for the answer. First question, how do you know if it's speeding up or slowing down? Well, if you've got a VT graph, the farther away you are from this time axis, if you're way out here, that's much faster than in here. So this speed might be minus 40. This is minus 20. And then we might have plus 20 and plus 40. But basically, the closer you are to that time axis, the slower you're going. And the farther you are away, the faster you're going. It doesn't matter whether you're moving left or right. So if it's slowing down, the points get closer to the time axis. How do you know if the acceleration is to the left? Well, remember, the acceleration was simply the slope. So if our slope is negative or positive, that tells us if it's moving left or right. A uh, negative slope would mean moving to the left. OK, another one of these questions with, where we're filling out the table for each of the regions. This time we've got a VT graph, so the criteria are going to change. What I'd like you to do is pause the video, try the question, and come back for the answer. OK, let's take a look at these one column at a time. So when we're looking for the significant constant of the motion on a VT graph, We'll only have two choices. We'll either have cases where we've got horizontal lines, which means your velocity is stuck at a certain value. So in region 1 and region 4, that's where we've got a constant velocity. And when we have diagonal lines, that's where we've got constant acceleration. Now, moving left or moving right, this time it's not the slope. You've got to look whether or not the points are b above or below the axis. So these points in region 1 are below the axis, so it's left. Region 2 starts out to the left, but moves to the right. 
region 3, those points are all to the right, and these points in region 4 are all to the right as well. Speeding up or slowing down, here we're looking to see whether the points are getting closer to the time axis or farther away from the time axis. So, naturally, no acceleration in region 1, but in region 2, of course, we're getting closer to the time axis, and that means we slow down until we hit zero speed, and then we start to speed up in the opposite direction. We start going to the right now. So it slows, then it speeds up. In region 3, here we're slowing the whole time because we're getting closer to that time axis where the velocity is zero. And then there is no acceleration in the fourth region. That's constant velocity. And then for the acceleration, we're looking for positive or negative slope. Of course, it's only here and here that we have any acceleration at all. And in region 2, we've got a positive slope, so we're moving to the right. Region 3, we've got a negative slope, and that means we're moving to the left. Okay, so let's summarize the results. On a VT graph, first thing is position's never indicated. You never know the position. You know changes in position, but not position itself. The direction depends on whether the point is above or below the time axis. The speed depends on how far the point is from the time axis. And then the steepness determines the magnitude, the size of the acceleration, whereas the sign of the slope tells us whether the acceleration is to the left or to the right. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.